In this video, we'll write a simple program to read a 0 to 10 volt level sensor for a tank. We'll consider the easy case where the sensor is 0 volt for empty and 10 volt for full. Then we'll consider the case where only part of the 0 to 10 volt range is used. Before we start, let's give a quick recap on what we mean by analog. Generally, for control systems, two things are implied. One, the real world signal we're measuring is continuously variable. For example, temperature and pressure varies continuously, not in discrete steps. We generally use some sort of transducer to convert the physical analog value to an electrical analog with a 0 to 10 volt and 4 to 20 milliamp being the most common. Our logo PLCs are digital devices and any analog signals are converted to digital form at the analog input. The logo analog inputs convert a 0 to 10 volt signal to a digital value of 0 to 1000 and these are discrete steps and so analog to digital conversion always introduces some conversion inaccuracy. Our first example is a tank level sensor. This could be ultrasonic, laser or some sort of potentiometer arrangement to give an analog signal of 0 to 10 volts for 0 to 750 litres of tank capacity. In this case, the sensor has been able to be calibrated with zero output when the tank is empty and 10 volts output when the tank is full. So that makes our conversion very easy. And also note that the tank is uniform cross-sectional area. So the 0 to 10 volt analog signal will be directly proportional to the volume in the tank. Here we draw our transfer function and we can see it's a straight line. At 0 volts we have 0 litres and at 10 volts we have 750 litres. In Logosoft we have the analog input already available for us. We have a message display and we're going to add in an analog amplifier to scale the value for 0 to 750 litres. We'll give the block a name. Minimum input value is 0, maximum is 750. And that's it. Notice the gain has been set to 0 0.075. So it's just going to multiply the analog input by 0 0.75. The analog amplifier needs to be terminated, so we'll use an AM flag for that. We'll edit our message text, give it a block name. We want to display the raw value from the analog input. That's available from the AI button above the editor. And we want to display the converted volume in liters. We can get that from the function block and take the amplified signal from that. Leave a little space to put in the units, L for liters. And we'll tidy up and align the two sets of numbers. We're using M25 for the white backlight on the logo display. On the simulator we can see the raw count and the volume are set at zero. On the simulator we adjust analog input one and we can observe the raw count going up to 1000 and the scaled volume going up to 750. So that all looks fine. Exit simulation mode. We'll download to the logo and simulate. Adjusting the potentiometer on the analog input, we can see that the raw count varies from 0 to 1000 and the volume is correctly scaled from 0 to 750. For the next exercise, we have the same tank but a different sensor, and this sensor is not teachable. We find by experiment that when the tank is empty, we get a reading of 1.5 volts, and when the tank is full, we get a reading of 7.5 volts. We need to scale the analog input to give us the same 0 to 750 litre readout on the logo. 
to program the analog amplifier, we're going to need to know the gain and the offset. These we can work out from our graph. The gain is the slope of the line, how many liters per count, and the offset is where does the line intersect the y-axis. So if we go back to school for a few moments and look at our linear equation, y is equal to mx plus c, m is the slope, how much does y change for every x? So that's 750 liters divided by 600 counts, remembering that the six volts will be converted to 600 counts. That gives us a gain of 1.25. And then to calculate where does the line intersect the y-axis at zero volts, we use C is equal to Y minus MX, just re rearranging the equation at the top. And we get minus 187.5. So back to our logo soft, I've moved the default display down to the lower end of the screen to give us a bit more space. We modify the gain and offset as we calculated a moment ago. Run a quick simulation on this to check everything's working. With the raw count at zero, we're getting minus 187 liters and with the slider at maximum, we get over 750 liters, which we'd expect. You might notice at various points of the simulation that we have difficulty getting exactly zero or exactly 750. That's because we're measuring 750 liters, but with only 600 steps of resolution on the digital conversion. So here we can see we can get minus one liters or plus one liters, but not exactly zero. If this was a problem, uh, you could adjust the offset by one count. We'll modify the circuit now. We're going to add in a tank low level alarm using the analog comparator. We'll set the low level at 100 liters and we'll get, we'll add a bit of hysteresis in. So that the alarm will turn on if we get down to 100 liters or less, but it won't turn off until we get above 103 liters. We'll set the message text with a priority of five. So it will override the default display and we'll add in the tank level. Since this is a warning message, we'll set the backlight to orange or amber, and we want the level low alarm to come on when the level OK analog comparator turns off. So we'll invert the input on the message text. Now we can see that when we go above 103 liters, the display is white. When we go below 100, it turns amber. Go back up 101. 102, 103, and at 104, it goes white again. Notice that the level warning with the higher priority overrides the default message text. We've seen that having a non-zero reading for tank empty complicates the maths and the scaling a little bit, but we can use it to our advantage here and say that if we ever get a reading that's below zero liters in the tank, then it means the sensor has broken or the wiring has broken or power supply gone. So we'll copy our low level alarm and give a, an error message if the liters reported ever drops below minus five. And we'll add a little hysteresis into this as well to prevent chatter. Modify the text message. We'll change the priority to 20. So it overrides the low level alarm. I've forgotten to change the function block name. We'll set M29 to give us a red backlight for default. And we'll turn on Q1 in the event of a fault. Run the simulation to check.
we drop below 100 litres, we get the low level warning. 50 litres. And when we go to minus 5, we should get sensor fault. And we increment back up again. And at minus 2, we back to low level warning. Simulator off. We'll transfer to the logo. Adjust the camera, get a better view. We want to watch the output LED and we'll switch on the monitor so we can see both the logo and in the logo soft comfort. So as we rotate the potentiometer on the top of the hardware simulator, we can see we go from white background to amber background to red. I'm having trouble getting good contrasts with the camera and the logo display, but it is actually visible to the naked eye. So to recap, we've had a look at the analog inputs 0 to 10 volt, the meaning of analog, analog sensor types, simple scaling with process 0 at 0 volts, scaling with process 0 with an offset. We've had a look at the analog amplifier gain and offset using our old y is equal to mx plus c equation, analog comparator with thresholds and hysteresis, and message text functions, inverted enable input, priority, parameter display, and backlight color. So I hope it's been a worthwhile 15 minutes. And as usual, if you have any requests, comments, uh, corrections, please let me know in the comments and like and subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.